Traylon Burks, he's not ready to be that dude yet. Eventually, it's going to come. Are you confident in that? Burks is is a developmental player. And when when we see it, then I'll believe that he's made that tr transition to the X receiver spot. Look at the release. There's your separation. Great route. Stutter and go. Gets by clean. That is unbelievable. May be the greatest catch I've ever seen. Traylon Burks. <laughs> this is what's so funny. It's so funny about Traylon Burks because I still feel like people don't get it. People don't get like, what do you mean? What people don't get that Traylon Burks is not like people still think of him because of his size and speed or so, not even speed, but just his size. Like that he is, you know, AJ Brown, like he got comparisons to AJ Brown because he was yes. big and you know, whatever. But, um, I think with Traylon Burks, like people don't realize he is going through a basically learning an entire new position. Um, I posted this on Saturday. Traylon mm -hmm. Burks in his prospect profile reception perception sample, 80.5% of his snaps in the slot or the backfield, 84% of his snaps off the line of scrimmage. Through the first two weeks, and you can find this on the website in the tracking tool right now, Traylon Burks' weeks one through two in reception perception 21.6% of his snaps in the slot or the backfield, 21.6% of his snaps off the line. That is so – it's huge. He's basically learning a new position because in college he played this like fake receiver gadget role, and now the Titans are moving <laughs> ma moving him to um, the okay. X receiver position because that's right. the spot that they have vacated. Last week in week three um, – he played like a ton. He, uh, you know, he actually played like ran a route on ninety percent of the dropbacks. He got like a playing time promotion. The results weren't <clears> there, <throat> and of course, the results aren't there, man. He's not ready to be that dude yet. Eventually, it's gonna come. Like eventually, Traylon Burks will. I mean, maybe, maybe. I, I was gonna I say, are you are you confident in that? I, I'm not a no. If I'm being like super honest, I'm not a hundred percent confident in that. I'm not, or I'm not a hundred percent confident in it happening this year. But you know, so far. Okay. They've kept his routes super simple. In the first two weeks, 79.3% of Traylon Burks' routes were a slant, a nine, or a curl. The only thing he does really well at this point is he gets open against zone coverage on slants and crossers. That's it. I just don't think he should be out there as an X receiver. Like You could be that guy if you were like a big <laughs> slot, but they don't want to play him in that role. So I'll believe it when I see it with Traylon Burks. That's <laughs> kind of where I'm at with him as a player right now. Okay, so um, what you've got here, um, from what I'm seeing here, I'm not totally encouraged by these scores, right? A 52% success rate versus man coverage, just 41% success rate versus press, 80% um, success rate versus zone. That's, that's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's pretty good. But to your point, Matt, those numbers read a lot like a slot receiver. They read like Juju Smith-Schuster, which mm. I know that all of the Traylon Burks bros hated that comparison when I made it this offseason, but I really think that's how he would be best utilized. Like all those plays that people love of him just running, like galloping in the open field when all the defenders are backed up in zone coverage. Like, yeah, he could do a lot of good stuff there. It's just if you're going to ask him, to train, like I said, a huge, huge transition, going from that role he had in college to the role he's playing in the NFL now as a as a true traditional X receiver, it's gonna take time. I just think he he's like a developmental player right now, and he might have he he's going to have moments this year. I I, I can I promise he will have moments. Right, he's already had some moments, but like I don't care about his yards per route run or any of that stuff because he's not like he's. Barely, he's barely doing <laughs> much right now. So, I'm okay. again. I'm just at a point where Burks is is a developmental player, and when when we see it, then I'll believe that he's made that tr transition to the X receiver spot because it's just a lot to ask for. It's like like I said, it the amount of press coverage and man coverage you're going to see, it's just totally different. And those weren't his strengths as a college player. It's it's interesting because I feel like the Titans have priced themselves into making him an X receiver. Um, the, and, you know, the Titans have a little bit of that old school, not a little bit, a lot of, of old school tendencies, right? Like they want to establish a run, they want to do, play good defense, those kind of things. But when you spend a first-round pick on a wide receiver, you don't spend a first-round pick on a slot receiver. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like when you, when you 
draft him with like a top 20 pick or top 25 pick. I think he went 18, right? So like when you spend yeah. no, the pick, no, pick number 18 on Traylon Burks, you can't justify that pick and say he's a slot receiver. You, you can't do, I mean, you, maybe you could if you had a progressive front office. That's not what they have. To justify that pick, you got to say, we see this guy, 225 pounds or whatever it is, um, you know, six feet plus, big boy. We see him as like a replacement for A.J. Brown. Yeah. That's the and only way to justify that pick. I think that was just a bad, I think that was a bad evaluation. Like, or at least not for, a t like, maybe the Titans are just fine with, like, Traylon learning on the job and like he's going to come around eventually maybe like the last four weeks oh. he's really good or something like that because I do think if you gave the Titans truth serum they'd admit like we're in a little bit of a transition right like they're yeah. still going to play and compete and all that stuff and Mike Vrabel's always going to have like I think Mike Vrabel's a good coach I think he's got a great culture there I just think they're they're bringing him along along slow because he needs to be brought along slow but but again, it's frustrating when you say say that and you look at the numbers and you and you've kind of evaluated all that stuff. And it's like we should be massacring the coaching staff in the front office because it's like, listen, when you spend a pick like number 18 on a wide receiver, put them in a position to succeed. That's yeah, not that's, what they're that's doing. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, Don't, yeah that, you're not that, putting him in a spot yeah. where he can succeed right out the gates. If they did that, that's again, that's when we're talking about being a progressive uh, front office and coaching staff. I agree that I think they backed themselves into this corner, um, probably because they didn't expect to not have AJ Brown this year until they were essentially like they they kind of priced themselves out of the AJ Brown business. So mm -hmm. I think they I think I agree with you that they've backed themselves into a corner a little bit that like. They have to have Traylon Burks hit as their X receiver, and he's if he's going to play X, he's, it's just going to take it's going to take time for him to get there.